How to become a millionaire through real estate investing. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Daniel, one half of the Quack Brothers. And it's actually really easy. Go to your local store, uh, buy a firearm, make sure it has ammunition in it, and you walk down to your local bank and you ask kindly while displaying the firearm that you would like a million dollars. Or if you actually want to use real estate investing to get there, let's go ahead and talk about this video. But before we do that, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and also click on that notification bell, guys. We put a lot of great free content here on YouTube regarding real estate investing. And you know, it doesn't hurt to have everybody watch it and everybody share in this knowledge as well. Now, this video is a little bit of a fun one, right? Because, well, you know, as kids, whenever we think of a rich person, this whole word millionaire comes up. Matter of fact, when I look at a lot of different Instagram profiles and a lot of different Facebook profiles, I see the word future millionaire in there a lot. And for me, um, it literally just means a net worth of over $1 million. Now, when I was a kid, I remember reading this little article, and for those of you guys that know myself and Sam's story, uh, obviously you guys know that Sam and I didn't grow up in the best financial situation. You know, we were immigrants to this country, and we struggled, our family struggled a lot financially, so ever since I was a kid, I always had you know big dreams of one day having a lot of money to help people that grew up like us. Fast forward to when I'm 17 years old, uh, I read an article. If you guys don't know Forbes magazine, uh, I read an article on Forbes saying that 90% uh, of millionaires in America got there by investing it in real estate. And as time went on, you know I found a lot of different things that kept pointing me towards the world of real estate investing. Another really cool story. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to own the Chicago Bulls. So kind of like how Mark Cuban is for the Dallas Mavericks, you know, I want to be that one day for the Chicago Bulls organization. And even the guy who owns the Bulls right now, Jerry Reinsdorf, he got his money by investing it in real estate as well. So as I mentioned, guys, every single road for me in my life personally has led to investing it in real estate. So I learned and learned and learned and learned, and before long, I actually achieved it. I became a millionaire, quote unquote, having my net worth over a million dollars by ways of investing it in real estate. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have a million dollars cash. So why don't I kind of break down here, you know, how you can be a millionaire through real estate investing, specifically through owning and controlling properties. So let's go ahead and take into example, and hypothetically speaking, let's put myself in the worst scenario. Let's say that, you know, you got an 18-year-old kid and uh, let's give it a name, right? Let's give him, uh, how about Jared? I really like Jared. Jared's a really nice name, right? Uh, and let's say this Jared has no money and uh, he's got no credit. So if you're watching this video, chances are you're in a much better position than Jared might be in, right? So you got no money, no credit, and at this point you're asking, well, Daniel, how do you become a millionaire? Through, through this scenario here. Well, it's easy, right? I believe in life that there are four currencies. We have time, we have knowledge, we have money, and we also have people. People are a currency. And all we can do is we can use the other three currencies to just get that one currency, which is money. We can use our knowledge, we can use our people, and we can use our time. And if you guys are watching religiously, the Quack Brothers YouTube videos on real estate investing, then you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the knowledge Everything that I'm gonna do here in this example, you can do it by watching our videos, our other videos that we have on real estate investing, especially concepts such as owner financing. So let's go ahead and take our 18 year old Jared, right? And he's got no money, no credit. And let's say one day he watches one of our videos on how to find deals, how to find good properties. And let's say he one day finds a 30 unit apartment complex. There you go. And let's say that this apartment complex is valued at $1 million. And as you say $1 million, don't forget to put your little pinky on your uh, lip. If you don't know what that means, that means you're too young. All right, just kidding. All right, so $1 million, okay? And uh, let's say that this property produces $100,000 in income every single year. And when I say $100,000 in income, I mean net income. So in real estate, we call this the net operating income. It pretty much means how much money you make after your expenses. Expenses are taxes, insurance, uh, maintenance, management, right, advertising, and there's just a whole list. But typically, right, it's half 
uh, of your gross is your net, your net operating income. So let's say net, it makes $100,000 a year. Now, obviously, you don't have the money to buy this property because, well, if you were to go to a bank, you're going to need minimum $200,000 to buy this $1 million complex. Uh, however, can you build relationships? Like we said, guys, uh, people in and of itself is a currency. And if you guys watch our other videos, you guys will know that we have multiple videos on how to raise capital for doing real estate deals. So let's say one day you meet Uncle Joe. You're at a party and you strike up a conversation with Uncle Joe and you kind of just bring up in passing that you found a 30 unit apartment complex that makes $100,000 a year. Well, let's say that Uncle Joe currently has $200,000 invested in the stock market. And let's say that he's looking to take that money out of the stock market because historically speaking, the S&P 500 the last 10 years has done really, really well. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, if you look at a 30 year comparison of the S&P 500, it's only done about 6.3%, right? And that's coming from one of my buddies who used to run a nine figure hedge fund in Wall Street. So 6.3% and you tell Uncle Joe, hey, how would you like to have instead of 6.3%, how would you like to have 10% cash on cash return every single year. Uncle Joe most likely is going to be interested. He might not say yes right then and there, but he's at least going to be interested. So let's say that you follow the steps, right? You watch all our videos on how to raise capital and Uncle Joe finally agrees. He says, yes, you know what kiddo? I'll give you $200,000 in, you know, in real estate to be able to get this deal done. All of a sudden you, 18 year old Jared, is super happy. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna get this deal done, I'm gonna make this deal work, I'm gonna be able to you know, take this really nice girl out on a date, you know, and it's gonna be awesome, right? So you get $200,000 from Uncle Joe, you give him a 10% cash on cash return, uh, which by the way, $200,000 cash on cash return, that's $20,000. $20,000 out of $100,000 is all you would need to give Uncle Joe to promise him, to give him that 10% return that you talked about. Now, of course, if you're gonna to go to a bank and get this loan, what do you still need? You still need credit. So what if you then went to, uh, let's say Aunt Bonnie. And Aunt Bonnie's got a really good credit score. Let's say Aunt Bonnie's got 762, right, credit score. And she's got an awesome score and she's willing to sign on the loan in exchange for, let's say $10,000 a year. So $30,000 covers your ability to be able to go to a bank, get a loan, and even cover the down payment. And these guys, Uncle Joe and Aunt Bonnie, are making phenomenal, phenomenal money and return for their investment, right? Uncle Joe being $200,000 and Aunt Bonnie being her credit score and signing on the loan and taking on that liability. That leaves $70,000. Now guys, if you guys know how to run numbers well and how to analyze deals, which again, if you watch our videos, you'll know exactly how to do that. You'll know that the typical debt service for an investment property is going to be about half uh, of your uh, net operating income. It's gonna be either 25% of your total gross or it's gonna be half of your net operating income, which pretty much you're saying the same thing uh, in just two different ways. So half of your net operating income is $50,000 for debt service. Now again, guys, if you watch our videos on owner financing and how to buy properties on contract, you'll know that most likely your debt service is going to be a lot lower, closer to thirty dollars or $40,000. And obviously, if you're interested in learning how to uh, buy properties owner financing, we do have a free owner financing class that I created along with a couple of friends of mine. The link is in the description below, check that out. So that leaves $20,000 for guess what? For you. So congratulations, Jared, you have $20,000. You're able to take that nice girl that you've been talking to on a date, whatever it may be, right? You're 18, so I don't know, the prom, right? So get a nice limo, et cetera, et cetera, right? But that also means more importantly that you have 20% equity in the building. Because remember, Uncle Joe put that $200,000 as a down payment for that $1 million building. So that means that you can either go about it a couple different ways. You can either assign Uncle Joe a note, a promissory note saying, hey, I'm gonna give you this much money, right, every single year, right, as a debt. Now, if Uncle Joe wanted like tax benefits, he wanted to take advantage of ownership and appreciation, Uncle Joe is most likely going to ask for some type of equity in your guys' partnership. So let's say that we format it to the point where Uncle Joe gets 40% 
of the partnership and Bonnie gets 10% of the partnership and you get 50%. So even in that scenario where Uncle Joe and Aunt Bonnie want a little bit more for their contributions, you still own half of 20% equity. So let's go down and do the breakdown of this final summary. So you got a million dollar building, a million dollar apartment complex, that's 30 units. You have $200,000 in equity. And let's say Uncle Joe and Aunt Bonnie, they want more than just their returns and they want ownership and equity as well. So as mentioned, Uncle Joe gets 40%, Aunt Bonnie gets 10%, and you're left with the remaining 50%. That means that they get $100,000 in equity and you get $100,000 in equity. That means your net worth right, just went up $100,000. If you repeated that process 10 times or if you did it here via note and you didn't give any equity at all and you do it five times, guess what? Your net worth is now a million dollars, which means that you, by law, are a millionaire. And that's actually how I increased and, and achieved that status of having that net worth for my life. I did a bunch of apartment complex deals where I gave away ownership and cash flow to other people who had the money, who had the credit, because I didn't, right? When I first started doing real estate at age 20, you know, I think I had like negative $187 in my bank account. I had terrible credit. I had maxed out my credit card. You know, I was in, I was Jared, right? Just named Daniel. Uh, so those are just the different names. Guys, this is something that I actually did for myself in my career, in my life, and I'm certain that it can has also help for you as well. So hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Like I said, it was a nice little fun video for me to do and break down uh, what is it, how to become a millionaire in real estate investing. Don't forget to subscribe and also click like on this video uh, and also click on that notification bell. And of course, follow us on TikTok and Instagram if you wanna see some really, really cool stuff. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.